Hello. Uh, today I have two separate color. This is serious business. I don't know if you can tell by my tone. I have two separate color correctors that I recently got in the mail from Huda Beauty. Okay, we have a pink one and we have a peach one. And they're doing this whole like side by side, team peach, team pink or whatever. Um, find your undertone thing, okay? Where'd the little, I thought I had a little, um, I thought I, oh, it's right here. <sighs> Discover your undertone. Well, girl, guess what? My undertone is over here, okay? I'm olive. I'm a warm olive. Peach is what I need, okay? But if you look at these colors, they're looking real dark. So when I'm looking at their little like breakdown of who's pink and who's peach, I see a fair skinned girl with the pink. I don't see any fair skinned girls over here for the peach, because apparently fair warm tones don't exist. So I thought it would be interesting to compare the two on my fair warm olive skin uh, so that we can kind of decide like what works best. We're gonna do pink on one side, peach on the other. They also have, this is like a whole set thing, um, peach pie easy bake powder and cherry blossom cake. So pe obviously if you compare, it's in the name. Peach pie is more peach. Cherry blossom is, wait, cherry blossom? Yeah, cherry blossom is more pink. And then they also, I think these are brand new. Um, the Easy Bake and Snatch, I actually don't know. Easy Bake and Snatch powders, which are in, they're labeled the same. So once again, peach pie and cherry blossom cake. So this one's pretty pink. Uh, I don't know how well you guys can tell on camera but the peach colors just look like they're gonna be too dark for me. So that's why we're gonna compare. I'm gonna be using one concealer. I'm gonna use my Tarte Shape Tape, OG, tried and true. Uh, let's just get into it. So I have the majority of my base makeup on. I did like a little bit of contour bronzer, light creams and stuff, and obviously foundation. Uh, whew, how am I gonna do this? And two little brushes. All right, let's do peach. First, we're gonna do peach on this side. I'm nervous about this. I don't know why. I just feel nervous about it. See, already I remember when I tried this for the first time, um, I just thought it was so dark, you know? I just thought it was gonna be so dark. And then the pink is just very cool toned. And in my opinion, still kind of dark, you know? Like, look at how cool toned that is. Ugh. On my olive skin, it really, like, I don't know how well you guys can see, but from this side, that color makes me look super dead. Whereas this color, while it's a little bit dark, um, it's more flattering. Like the warm tone is much more flattering. I have two separate Sigma E25 brushes <laughs> that I'm gonna use to blend this, blend these out. Cause that's what I like to use. So this has been a common problem for fair olive skin for many, many years. This idea that we don't exist, <laughs> um, that fair skin can't be olive, that fair skin is always cool toned for whatever, or neutral for whatever reason. Um, see, that just looks so dark. And luckily a lot of brands have learned that there are fair olive skin tone. Even that looks really dark to me. It's better, like the, a little bit lighter, but it's still really dark in my opinion. Mm. But yeah, a lot of brands have kind of come around to the fact that there's fair skin that needs warm tones, <laughs> warm or olive tones, you know? And then I'm gonna go in with my Tarte Shape Tape. And then I'm just gonna go in and set with each of these powders, even though my feeling is that they're going to be way too dark for me in general. Because for reference, um, my e.l.f. Halo Glow Powder, I don't know how well you guys can see the difference. I don't know, you probably won't really be able to tell, but my e.l.f. Halo Glow is quite a bit lighter than Peach Pie. Um, and while this is cool toned, like it's cool toned, so it kind of looks like it's close, and it is a little bit lighter, but there's a lot of color in here. You know, and just a just a warning for anyone who doesn't know, these powders are heavily scented. It doesn't really bother me that much. I feel like it doesn't really like um, last too long on your face, but uh, but they are very heavily scented. 
I'm gonna use my setting brush. I'm just gonna use my switch in between so we're not cross-contaminating here. I'm using shape tape and light sand. And I'm going to blend using my Sigma wedge sponge. <sighs> Moment of truth. I'm gonna start with the area that has nothing to do with this. We're easing into it. <laughs> So I'm gonna blend one side and then immediately set. So blending the pink first. Are you focusing on me or are you being a dick? I can't really tell. So that doesn't look too bad so far. It's not doing a ton in my opinion to cancel out the gray tone because it is Pretty cool toned, but you know, shape tape is a, shape tape is a trooper. All right, I'm gonna pick up the pink setting powder. I'm very nervous about this because it's extremely pink and also very, very matte. Okay. Oh God. Okay, it doesn't look as pink on my skin as I, I thought I was just gonna be like, I thought I was gonna be straight up pink. Okay, it does look like way more pink than, you know, what I'm used to, but there's the uh, cool toned side. Switching, switching. If you don't know, I have a brush set with Sigma and this is, it's a favorite set with Sigma and this is one of the products that's in it. Switching, okay, ready. Peach, peach said. I feel like you're focusing on my ring and it's very rude. Okay. This just seems like it's too dark. This one I'm really nervous about. All right, I'm gonna go into the peach powder. I heard it's gonna be too dark. I can already, I can just feel it. Oh. Uh. No. Uh, uh. Oh. <laughs> it's so much darker than the rest of my face. Oh. Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> okay. <sighs> okay, so we set with the loose powders. I'm like a little bit confused about what the bacon snatch powders are supposed to be. Like I just don't really, I just don't really understand. I think that they're supposed to maybe be for the rest of your face or something, but I'm gonna try just placing a little bit of them um, underneath my eyes, I guess, to bake extra or something. Uh, but first I'm gonna set the rest of my face. And I'm just using my uh, Givenchy powder. I'm just finishing off the rest of my face. Um, just like amping up my bronzing a little bit. I've been upset by this Smashbox Halo Powder palette. I have two of them, they're so nice. So I'm just gonna build up my warmth and definition a little. This, <laughs> it's funny, this palette is actually perfect because it has a peach it's like a sculpting situation. So you sculpt with the, this blush and then you, this is like the pop on the cheeks. So I'm using the um, peach to like sculpt right now, but it has the peach and the pink, which is kind of perfect <laughs> since we're doing peach and pink. Okay, let's zoom in again. And now I'm gonna, um, I guess, just put a little bit of each of these powders underneath my eyes. I really don't, ugh, the powder that I, Ugh, the Easy Bake Setting Powder is so drying. So drying. It's not a good look, but we're, this is the experiment, okay? We're here for the sake of the experiment. So now I'm gonna use these guys. Oh God, they come with a little puff, but I'm not gonna use that. So we have the peach one, peach pie, and then cherry blossom. Hello, focus, focus on it, focus on it. 
cherry blossom side by side okay um and they come with the i don't know if they come with or if you have to buy these separate but like in the little pr box they came with these like cute little puffs that are color coded <laughs> um look at it so cute i'm gonna use the little guy the really really little guys i'm gonna start off with the which side do we do with the peach here i'm gonna start off with the peach this is obviously gonna be too dark but we're doing it for the experiment that's no alex what are you doing i can't i'm not gonna uh, i'm gonna use this i can't possibly use a puff i'm gonna use it's just, it's gonna be too dark. I'm gonna go in, it's gonna be so dark. Ready? I hate it, I like hate this. I hate it, I don't know why I'm doing it. It's so dark, it's so dark. What am I doing right now? The pink, the pink, I'm doing the pink. pink is awful as well. I look sick. I look so sick. <sighs> I look dried out and crepey and sick. <sighs> I hate it. It sucks because this tone looks better on my skin. It looks better on my skin, this tone, okay? It's just too dark. It's way too dark. This is fine, like it's okay because it's a little bit lighter, but can you see how like this side, because it's peach, adds more warmth and it cancels out the gray tone under my eyes a little bit better. Whereas on this side, you see a lot, I just see a lot more like of a dead gray color underneath my eyes. So I know my undertone, <laughs> but neither of them are it. Neither of them work. <laughs> So, so we've completed this experiment. Everything I thought was going to happen happened. Just saying, I can predict the future. Here's what I'll say. If you're like 18 years old, then you can use this underneath your eyes, okay? If you're 18 and you have like absolutely no fine lines, you can get away with it. Or if you have like filler, if you like, you know, you're all plumped up, then you can get away with using this underneath your eyes. Um, I'm 33, full dish dish closer. Dish closer. Um, dish closer? <laughs> uh, I'm 33, okay? I've always had hollow under eyes. My under eyes, on, like they're just so, obviously like under eye skin is already so sensitive. I can't possibly use this powder alone underneath my eyes. I had mentioned in a previous video that I was mixing, is it pound cake, the shade pound cake? in with my e.l.f. Halo Glow powder. That's been an experiment, okay? So I don't know how I feel about it. So I don't know. Wouldn't use the Huda Beauty on its own. Not at this age, okay? Not at this age. The main frustration definitely comes from being just like real light, real pale. And I was talking to somebody about this recently at a um, an event for About Face Beauty. They just launched a new foundation, which I still haven't gotten to try, but I'm like very excited about it. And yes, I will keep you posted. And she, her name is Monica. Um, I'll link her down below. She, <laughs> excuse me, too much powder in the air. She has like medium tan olive skin. She has an olive undertone. And we were just kind of like commiserating about how like difficult it is to find olive undertones. And she said, I was like, girl, I am pale and I am olive. It is so difficult. And she was like, there are so many people in my community who are, you know, on the fair side who are, have olive undertones and it's impossible to find products that work. So that's where the frustration comes from. Um, usually when companies will come out with like one, two, uh, peach versus pink, it's, it's always that they create products that have peach undertones, uh, peach, warm the warm undertones they are all geared towards deeper skin tones people just always assume for whatever reason that fair skin is cool toned always now i know that olive can be like really complicated olive is very complicated because olive can lean more cool toned or it can lean more warm toned and if you're an olive who leans warm okay you can't find any products that work for you <laughs> Um, not that it's so obvious when I'm looking at myself in the mirror. It's not like completely horrendous. Either side, I could make it work. You know what I mean? But it is not ideal. It is not ideal for my skin tone. Um, and when I got this 
PR box and I saw this kind of like team this, team this, like which one are you? I was like, I can't be either of these girl, it don't work for me. And I wanted to make this side by side comparison to really test it, to see if like number one, maybe I'm wrong, which I wasn't, I never am. Uh, that's not true, sometimes I am. And number two, to help you decide that like maybe this would work for you, maybe it wouldn't if you were interested. Let me know if there are any other little like experiments surrounding, it doesn't have to be these products, it could be anything else, but um, surrounding like color correcting, undertones, I don't know, talking about like that kind of stuff. Things that you have specific questions on that I maybe haven't covered. If I have, um, I'll let you know. But I hope that this was helpful in some way to at least compare. And maybe it'll help you sort of like figure out where you lean more towards on the color spectrum. I'm like devastated looking at this because it's just everything, I, especially this side, or kept getting darker and darker. It's like up here now is like darker than my blush. <sighs> wow, I hate it. Uh, <laughs> thank you for watching. Um, all right, end of video. Let's do our little um, question. Let's do our little question answer segment. Um, okay, so this person is asking, what my favorite way to apply different primers to different areas of my face is. Uh, so this is like something that is pretty difficult. Obviously like there are certain areas of your face that have like different needs. One of my favorite things to do is to make sure that especially the outer perimeter of my face is hydrated. For the most part, I rely on my skincare heavily. So typically what I like to do is like light layers of hydration. Um, and then I'll go in with something heavier around my eyes. Now, sometimes if I use a little too much hydration, especially in my T-zone, usually around my nose, like this area around my nose, I'll get a little bit more oil production. Um, I have, I've talked about this many times. I have struggled in the past with um, pore filling primers. I've tried the one from e.l.f., I've tried the one from Tatcha. I try pretty much all, I've tried Hourglass. I try like a lot of different pore filling um, primers that are supposed to like mattify and prevent like texture and stuff. The best solution that I have found, because this person is asking about um, having texture predominantly on their cheekbone and orbital bone, but they can't avoid putting makeup there, obviously. How do you target with primer? So I think they're looking for like a solution to crepey, crepey and cakey makeup in those areas. My best advice would be focus on your hydration. In my opinion and in my experience, I haven't really been able to find something that um, successfully room, like blurs texture than, uh, than just simply making sure that skin is nice and hydrated. What that's going to mean for you is making sure that you're allowing that uh, product plenty of time to sink in. So I know a lot of people don't like that answer because they're like, I don't want, like I don't have time, I need this to be super fast. Wake up 10 minutes earlier. That's all I can say to you. Give yourself a nice amount of like hydration in those specific areas where makeup tends to like cake up um, or look too heavy or too thick uh, or crepey and just like allow it time to sink in. That is really like the best answer unless you want to get some kind of like procedure done. You know what I mean? Like there are a lot of people out there, the reason that a lot of makeup people get filler or get Botox or things like that is because like it just helps the makeup go on smoother. If your goal is to age naturally, um, you gotta make some little changes here and there. So my suggestion would be focus on that hydration. Now, if you're a person who has, um, who ends up getting oily in certain areas after I prime, after I moisturize and do all of that, like for instance, after that, today um, I use the one, the new one size priming serum or whatever, just cause I'm testing it. I think I really like it. I use that, I put it everywhere. And then right in my T-zone right here where I tend to get a little bit oily, I just put a little bit of my um, Givenchy powder. Just put a little powder. Then I went in with my foundation and then did this whole exper experiment. So that has been like probably the best option for me recent as of recently. It just works, it's faster. Um, and I don't have to worry about pilling, you know, with like mixing different primers. So it sounds to me like you don't necessarily need to be mixing a bunch of different, or not mixing a bunch of different, but using a bunch of different primers. What you need to focus on is hydration, lightweight hydration. Um, you can build it up a little bit more in certain areas. It doesn't mean that you have to get like a specific moisturizer or like something super heavy. It could just mean like doing a couple extra layers in those areas and giving it plenty of time to really sink in before you do your makeup. 
That was a lot of information. <laughs> um, but we're talking about complexion today. We're talking about a lot of complexion stuff today. So hopefully all of this was helpful. Thank you for your questions. I really appreciate it. Uh, I did see one person was like, I'm commenting on your first video ever to test whether or not you actually see these comments. I did see it. Uh, but I was busy and I forgot to take a screenshot of it, but I did see it. So I'm acknowledging you and that was a very good idea experiment wise um, Blah blah blah, whatever Hope this was helpful Don't get discouraged if you are like on the warm side warm olive side and you are fair-skinned We got more options coming People have been asking me to do like an updated olive skin foundation I'm probably like a swatch test or like lineup and uh, so that you can see them all next to each other. I'm waiting for that About Face foundation because I've heard they have olive tones and I want to use it and I want to include it. Yeah, that's it. I gotta go. Love ya. See you next time. Farewell. Do you guys like it when I click? Click.